Hello, this is David from David Books and Comics, and today I, I want to talk about the first science fiction adventure strip and one of the first adventure strips ever published in the newspapers, and uh, that's uh, Buck Rogers. This is uh, the reprint edition can, that came out, published, I believe, in 1969 by Chelsea House, New York. Sorry, this one's 1969 initially in hardcover and then 1980. And it features a, a preface introduction uh, by the relative of the uh, newspaper publisher and a, a beautiful introduction, well-written introduction by Ray Bradbury. And he talks about the uh, creation, how, how uh, Buck Rogers inspired him, inspired his imagination, and uh, basically how the newspaper uh, came about. And of course, it features the ori original artwork, the first artwork as it appeared and as it was drawn by a guy named Dick Culkin. And of course, the story was based on a pulp adventure no, no, novella uh, that was published in a pulp magazine called Amazing Stories back in 1928. Philip Nolan and Dick Hawkins were contacted by the uh, newspaper publisher, uh, a fellow named John C. Dill, who encouraged them to produce the strip in uh, his newspapers. And these are some of the, the key or what the publishers believe to be the most important uh, stories. Uh, and, and this is the listing. So the uh, initial story, and the first story as it appeared. And the other uh, main uh, stories. So this is a, an excellent overview of the entire uh, strip. So uh, that's uh, uh, Buck Rogers in the 25th century. The, the character featured mainly, uh, it was the work of writer Phil Nolan. And then it uh, became uh, Dick Hawkins who, who took a turn at the writing. For the uh, Sunday strips, there were a myriad uh, artists and writers that contributed to the series. And uh, this included people like uh, Murphy Anderson, who worked with this uh, and drew in the series uh, since 1949, Leon Dworkins, Rick Yeager, and some of the other writers included um, people like Fritz Lieber, who wrote uh, some of the some of the Sunday strip, some of the Sunday pages. So that's uh, Buck Rogers, and the strip lasted for about 30 night from 1929 to 1967 68 when it was uh, finally discontinued but uh, this features some of the early work of and uh, of dick calkins and um, the major villains that he would uh, confront like uh, killer kane the character uh, Buck Rogers reminded me a lot of um, E. E. Doc Smith's uh, Skylark series, which was also initially published and written in um, the early uh, Hugo Gernsback uh, publications, Amazing Stories. This series was was considered space opera. Firstly, it took place on. Uh, on Earth, so it's this. This story is kind of simple. It's about a a pilot who, uh, kind of in the H.G. Wells in the sleeper wakes mode, falls asleep and then all of a sudden wakes up in the twenty fifth century in twenty four one nine A.D. and uh, realizes that he has uh, uh, powers and uh, begins to. Uh, face different types of adventures as he gets uh, used to living in this new uh, 
very changed world that's been taken over by a, uh, a hostile uh, uh, group of people. Anyway, so that's uh, Buck Rogers in the 25th century. The, as I said, the introduction fe features excellent writing by um, Ray Bradbury, where he says things like, and here is where all pontiff intellectuals or pseudo-intellectuals, if you wish, Ray Bradbury, speaking of himself, lock horns. For the one thing that continually, um, continually amazes me in my fellow human beings, intellectual or not, is their lack of imagination. Having lifted myself every day of my life by my mad, if not insane, bootstraps, it was years before I really glanced about and saw that not only did others lack self-starters, but did not even know their own condition. They imagined themselves clothed. I say them naked. I soon saw also that the simplest addition escaped them. And by simple addition, I mean man plus rocket equals moon. Only in the last few years has that seemed an agreeable arithmetic to millions of souls, regardless of their brain sufficiency. So he's very critical here of people that did not feel inspired by the imaginative uh, creations of these early comic strips, uh, which inspired him, obviously. So it's a very well-written, very, very inspiring, actually, introduction by Ray Bradbury. So that's that. But I also want to show you some of the, um, you may have seen these before, but I'm going to show them in a little more detail. This is uh, uh, also space opera. This came out by one of the great uh, draftsmen of the comic strip, and comic, uh, Sunday comic, Alex Raymond. And this was in 1934. I believe to compete with the Buck Rogers uh, uh, comic comic strip, adventure strip. Um, this came out in 1934 by Alex Raymond, and Alex Raymond created uh, Flash Gordon. And Flash Gordon appeared in the King Features uh, syndicate. And copyright, of course, is owned by them. The artist, Alex Raymond, died uh, fairly young in an uh, automobile accident in 1956. But he left us with a legacy and uh, inspired artwork. Very, uh, some of the, the anatomy, the um, creativity, the uh, level of the characterization shown and the action panels and so on as only uh, Alex Raymond uh, could uh, create. So that's uh, a hardcover edition of the first uh, Sunday pages that came out of uh, Flash Gordon and uh, the planet Mongo. And I also have a, um, and I'll show you the, uh, this is the uh, Brazilian uh, version of Flash Gordon, and this is uh, one of the uh, edited, but I, I believe complete edition of um, the Flash Gordon uh, Sunday newspaper strips. And uh, here, this is a Portuguese translation done in uh, Brazil uh, by, uh, of an Italian uh, version of the uh, Sunday pages. So this one came out 1971. And I think the art reproduction, I think, is much better and more detailed and I think more lovingly uh, restored. This is uh, uh, called Umunst Glacial, 
Flash Gordon, um monstro, monstro glacial. So it has Flash Gordon, Rainha Fria coloca sua crua sorda fronte de Flash e beijando pronuncia levanta-se Flash Gordon. Conde de Frigia. So there you go. That's my... So there you go. The, the artwork is pretty, pretty, pretty good. So that's that one. This one is uh, volume, volume two. I don't have volume one. And this is uh, volume three. And this one is Wrapped the Dale Arden. That's the kidnapping of Dale Arden. And again, the, um, the artwork reproduction is really good. 1971. So that's that one. Cover art and the interior art is all Alex Raymond. And this is number volume four. And this is a Mort the Flash Gordon E. Dale Arden. There you go. That's the death of Flash Gordon and Dale Arden with a. Uh, Leads you on a cliffhanger, requiring a continuity. It says, don't miss it. In the le next pages, próximo livro de Flash Gordon. Estará sensacional. There you go. So that's Flash Gordon. That's volume four. All right. Now I'm going to show you some of the... Um, early paperbacks that I collected that came out by Avon and this is a fine copy my in my estimation a very fine copy of the first volume of the Avon paperback Alex Raymond's uh, The Lion Men of Mongo what this is is a, a novelization of Alex Raymond's original story as it appeared in the uh, in the pages in the Sunday pages and uh, they were written by a a mystery crime writer named a very good one actually named Bruce Cassidy so he wrote this this is uh, volume uh, one the cover art, I believe it's by, yeah, it's signed. It's George Wilson, one of the uh, Avon's early uh, cover artists. He did this series and he did the Phantom series. He also did covers for the Gold Key comic book. And this is uh, Flash Gordon, uh, Plague of Sound. Again, cover art is by uh, George Wilson. And this is a very good copy. It has some uh, rubbing. This is a very good to find copy of the Space Circus. And there's uh, on the back cover you see art, the original art of uh, Alex Raymond. Okay, so that's that one. And this is The Time Trap of Ming the 13th. This is volume four. Cover art, signed again, George Wilson. And then we have The Witch Queen of Mongo. Cover art is by uh, George Wilson. And there you have, there's the back covers. They all feature this Alex Raymond, uh, beautiful Alex, Alex Raymond pictures, um, which inspired the collector like me to buy the books. Plague of Sound. And there's a sword battle with Ming, Ming the Merciless. So there you go. So that's Lion Men of Mongo. And this is the last one in the series. 
Uh, there's only six, unfortunately. And uh, this is the War of the Cybernauts. And there you have Alex Rain. And this is the BLB, the book, what's called a Big Little Book. This is um, the same as uh, this story. Um, the this is the Ice World of Mongo. And it, but it features more of the uh, more of the artwork, and this is his artwork. Alex Raymond. All that detail. This is what's called see a move. So it's a flip page. Um, BLB, better, better or bigger, a big little book. Okay, so that's that. And I'll also show you what I may have, you may have not seen uh, before is a children's game and this is the children's game this is uh, flash gordon it's a very simple game to play it plays like trouble actually so you have the cards and you start i believe you start they're here or here, and then you make your way to the moons. It's the game is similar to the game, um, similar in uh, in the rule book. Was, uh, this came out in the in nineteen seventy seven, and, and according to the rules, it's pretty much played the same as uh, uh, the game Trouble. Anyway, so that's Flash Gordon, and. Uh, especially uh, Buck Rogers, one of the first adventure strips and um, one of the more inspiring, written in 19, and the surprising thing is that it was written in 1929, and it led to uh, people like Ray Bradbury and others to be inspired uh, to create, actually. Um, so I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, little presentation on uh, Sunday comics and uh, adventure strip comics, and especially uh, the uh, Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers. And if you did and you want to see more content about my uh, comic books and books, uh, please remember to give me that like. Thanks everyone for subscribing. And feel free to comment because the comments add, I find that the comments people make add to uh, helping us being informed about these, these uh, books, these comics, and helps others know, uh, know more. All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Okay. Bye.